Okay, I figure we will go ahead and get this shindig started. Soon people will arrive. By live stream, they will come. They will come. They will come. I know they will. So. Gonna mute myself here. Alright. Okay, let's see who shows up. Anyway, as soon as people show up, say hello, and then I will start uh, explaining what I'm going to do. Looks like I've got no Discord buddies today yet, so that's all right. That's all right. True. See, I got two people in here now. Who's there? La la. Hello, Star Hope. Hey there. How are you? Let's see. Let's see how many people we got. Let me do a little refresh here. Figure I'll just chill till it gets a little busier in here. Oh, we got eight already. Cool. Okay. Well, for those of you who are just coming in and don't know or and stuff, um. I'm upgrading the, uh, or I have been upgrading the Klingon D7 to a Katanga. Katanga. There it is, right there. Hello, Don. Hello, Randall. Hello, Thor's Hammer. Hello, Harold. Hello, Kapala, Jonathan. And, yes, sixth day of Power Rangers month and final day of Star Trek Las Vegas. Oh, hello, Max. This person knows me. Hello, Max. Who is this person, this Power Ranger dude? They know be my Max. They probably know they're probably in my Discord. Because <laughs> in Max, I am, I mean, disc, in Max, in Discord, I am Max. What the hell am I saying? Anyway. So anyway, I've been working on this Katanga. Uh, it's not finished yet. Uh, I have some, I have to change the textures on the nacelles. And I have to finish up this wing right here. I'm not going to do that. I've finished the thruster, so I'm not going to do that on this live stream. Instead, I've decided I'm going to do something a little more interesting and exciting, and that's going to be start working on animations. Um, I did a poll earlier on whether people want to see uh, a battle breakdown of the three Katingas when they attacked V'ger in Star Trek The Motion Picture, or if they would rather see this thing versus a uh, constitution class old style so not the refit but okay so here oh this doesn't have my new upgraded uh new upgraded warp nacelles i mean new upgraded uh imp impulse drive on it i might have to get a different novel uh model here so yeah let me see i i grabbed the wrong one now I have to find one with a uh, proper impulse engine and uh, do it that way. Let's see, I'm going to change my camera. Sorry, I'm diagonal. The bracket on my camera got screwed up, so I'm going to have to be diagonal. Y'all just have to deal with it. Um, so if the stream has stopped for a moment, I'm just on another Blender instance and trying to find my old uh, constitution class that has the proper impulse engines and then I'm gonna bring that one in if I can figure out where to put the thing <laughs> yes thank you Don thank you Don all right so let me see I've got I've got I think most of see what is the last video I did with this ultimate computer breakdown those ones have the correct impulse drives on them so I'm gonna grab one of those uh, it, yeah I am a sick I am a Batman villain I wonder I wonder which Batman villain I would identify with most I don't know anyway okay so yeah I'm gonna grab I'm going to grab this Enterprise that's got the proper impulse drives on it. 
and bring it over. Oops. Jeez. It's got animations and stuff. Clear animation data. Select hierarchy. So, so this live streaming thing is kind of new to me. I'm not quite used to doing it on the regular. I'm sure I'll get better at it as time goes on. And uh, we learn by doing, don't we? <laughs> All right. Okay, I just brought in a, a newer enterprise, and now I need to move it. I'm going to move it. It's over here. I'm going to move this thing back to where we can see it. Find it. Oh, yeah. I got it right on top of the uh, Katanga, and it's too small. Uh, that's fine. I can fix that. Don't have to be precise, but I can fix it. Okay, let's grab this thing. Yeah, that does. That's not a pretty picture there. These two mating is not not gonna. It's not gonna be good. Why can't I move it? Oh, I've got the wrong thing. Okay, Mister Enterprise, come on. And then, so basically, what I'm gonna do, um, like I said, this Katinga isn't quite textured yet, but. What I can do is set up like an opening animation. And I think the opening animation is going to be an attack on the old Constitution class. And so basically my, my thinking was we'll do like a 15 to 20 second animation. Um, and then with that 15 to sec 20 second animation, the Katinga will decloak probably coming at an angle this way, maybe try to attack in a cell, and then it will um, do a flyby, unleash everything, and then recloak, and then the Enterprise will sort of suffer a hit. Or, this this doesn't have to be the Enterprise, in fact, it probably will change the ship, although it could be the Enterprise. The scenario is, like, this is maybe the whole encounter that prompts the, oops, I need to set up the hierarchy there. It prompts the uh, Constitution refit, right? And uh, so maybe because of the Katinga, now upgraded from the D7, is strong, being that it has a cloaking device, much stronger power plant, um, slightly different weapons, and all that kind of stuff that it finally is a match for the Constitution class, the old-style Constitution class. Um, let's see, parent... Object. So I'm just setting this up so that I can... Is I took this apart earlier. And then I made... If we go in close, you can see the changes I've made. It kind of looks Katinga-ish in this light. If we go into a Cycles render, uh, it is uh, going to look better. I'll show you all that. There we go. Alright, as soon as I finish up the hierarchy here, I will uh, get caught up on on chats here. Call this the forward pod. I just named it Sphere for some reason. Alright, so this has to be parented to this. Parent object. And I added the new bridge and new Katinga sensor modules on here and new textures as well. And those are going to be parented to the forward pod like that. And I have Katinga weapons that are not completely textured yet. So down here we have like a whole disruptor platform that isn't, isn't finished yet. Parent object. I figure these must be much more powerful disruptors than uh, the originals on the D7. And eventually I'll get those textured and so that they look real and not plastic. But in order to move this around properly, I've got to parent everything to the right place. Whoops. Parent that to there. Do a little movement test. Yeah, the impulse engines are not connected back there, so I've got to fix that. And those aren't textured yet either. 
but soon they will be done. So I figure I can work on the animation and finish the textures later, right? And kind of do just test renders. And then once I get the textures done, I can do a full render, which takes ages, by the way. All right, so it looks like this is moving, all right? So I can start animating soon. But first, let's catch up on chats. Uh, let's see. Uh, you got the camera angle of the 60s. Yes, the camera angle. Let me see if I'm still okay. Still there on camera. Randall says, maybe instead of the Enterprise, you could have it be the hood. And what was the fight over? And the mighty hood went down. Perhaps so. Uh, Donald says, oh, well, first live stream and definitely interesting to see how you work. Oh, well, thank you. I hope it's interesting. I don't do a lot of live streams. Um, Jonathan again, Grumpy Cat, is talking about how he heard that the D7 was a Starfleet designation and the Katinga was the real name of the vessel. Um, it could be. That's, that's all kind of lore that's in the dark. Um but I like the D7 better than the Katinga. I mean, officially, if we're going by what they wrote for the motion picture, they designated that cruiser, those cruisers that attacked Aviger as the Katinga. So then all the writing and lore from there just assumed that the Katinga means an upgraded D7, or maybe it's a, a version. A lot of lore, like games, decided, well, the Katinga is a version of a D7 that is... A bit more enhanced than the original series D7s. Um, so perhaps with the letter behind it, D7A, D7B, D7C, D7 this or that, right? Um, but the main difference between the Katinga and everything else is um, the other D7s is it should have a cloak. Maybe not a very good cloak, but a cloak that was copied from the Romulans, no doubt. Um, so, we're, that means that when this thing attacks, and this is just going to be a preview opening animation, that means that when this attacks, it's got to decloak, unleash, and uh, attack the Enterprise. In fact, I wonder, or attack the ship, which I might change to something other than Enterprise, because right now it's Enterprise. Uh, so, what am I going to do here? First thing I need to do is figure out... I don't think I like this just basic starry environment. Probably do something a little bit more interesting. But the focus will be on the Enterprise at the beginning of the scene. And let's, let's make this about 20 seconds. Let's see how many frames per second am I doing here. 30? No. We'll do 24. And we're going to make it about... Um, We'll go with 15 seconds. I'm always overreaching on this kind of thing. So 15 times 24 frames. 15 times 24 is 360 frames. Okay. So we're gonna make the thing a total of 360 frames. And the camera will start here. Um, the Enterprise will be coming along. Probably get some movement. Let's just start with that. So we'll, we'll have the Enterprise sitting here all innocent and and cool. Looking back in this angle. And then this ship is going to be back here a bit. And I figure it'll approach and decloak. And then after it decloaks, it's going to unleash everything, do an alpha strike. And... Um, It would be more cool if I put hull damage on here, although that is a time investment. I could just do a shield impact. And then what I think I would like to do towards the end of the animation is follow, camera follow the D7 as it flies by, does an aft torpedo attack, fire some aft torpedoes, um, and then recloaks. Now, you guys might be thinking, I remember how to do everything, but what often happens is I go, I remember there's certain videos I did a thing in, and then I'll go and I'll find the assets of that video, and I'll uh, go and uh, 
refresh myself on how to do it, but I can set up the basic animation right here. I guess we'll start out right about here. All right, let's get going. Again, for those of y'all who are just joining us, I have been uh, upgrading the D7 to a Katinga, and it is not finished. It is it is not textured yet. Uh, oh, this. So basically, I'm going to start my animation by putting some location and rotation keyframes here on the Enterprise. Let's start it. Uh, let's see. Let's do a local. Let's move it back this way just a bit. And then we'll swing it forward into the frame. About what? Actually... We'll make it a continuous movement. Start back here. I. And then go ahead and go to the end of the scene. And have it continue to move to about here. I. By this time it's out of the camera. But the camera angle is going to change. And now I don't want it to start gradually and slow down. So I'm going to change my key types to uh, interpolation mode, just linear. It's going to start, it's going to come in, and then this ship is going to decloak and attack, and then we'll follow the clean on ship instead, and this one's going to take damage and continue on in that direction. And then that'll be the end of the scene. Alright, so, so that looks good, but I need a little bit of and we'll get the ship movements first before I start worrying about changing the camera. And before we start worrying about weapons. Because I, in fact, let me go ahead, speaking of weapons. I'm going to go to another Blender file that I have. Let's see if y'all are able to see which... Okay, y'all are only able to see one Blender file. One Blender instance I'm working on. Um, Let's see. I'm going to append uh, something from a scene, and that's going to be disruptor bolt particles. I figure I'll go ahead and get those disruptor emitters, uh, which are particle emitters that fire disruptor bolts, in here. So, I have to figure out where I used some last. I think the last time I used them was when I did a video about the Stormbird. So if I can find my Stormbirds fire disruptors stuff, I can append that particle system in. Where is this? Where is this fracking thing? There we go. Okay, Stormbird. No, I don't want Stormbird. Okay, so Stormbird now. Let's see. Stormbird vid comp. I need to be more organized. I need to set up a folder. Like, one for weapons effects. I have a pretty good space background folder I've set up, but... I haven't set up my folder for all kinds of different weapons effects, unfortunately. Uh, let's see. Huh. I guess I could pull it from somewhere else. I think I'll do that. Oh, wait a minute. Here we go. Okay, there's the Stormbird stuff. Okay, the Stormbird, for those of you who don't know, is the Romulan version of the uh, Katinga. Or the Romulan version of the D7. So all I'm trying to do is find one where it's firing disruptors. Ah, here we are. And I'm going to append my um, disruptor emitters. And so I can actually fire with this Katinga. Oh, there's objects. Objects, objects, objects. See? Texture. There we go. Alright, now. Disruptor. Heavy emitters. Disruptor light emitters. Start with lighter emitters. 
I've got heavy emitters and I've got light emitters. All right. So that should have brought in the particle system and everything. Let's go find it and look at it, huh? Once I've uh, looked at it, we will uh, get caught up on Super Chats. So this is a particle system disruptor emitter. Let's see what it... Yeah. Now it's firing sort of uh, bluish disruptors, isn't it? We'll change that. I'm thinking that the disruptors for the Katinka should be red. I vote red for that. It's got red torpedoes. Why not give it red freaking... What else did I admit here? I admitted something else. Or er, appended something. What is this thing? What is this junk? Oh, oh no. These are part of the Katinga that I forgot to attach. All right. I oh, know. Okay. I can fix that. Let me fix that, then I'll get caught up on uh, Super Chats. Uh, oh, it looks like I didn't rename my Katinga the proper thing either. This is now Katinga, not D7. It must be organized, Mr. Maximilian. No, my real life name is not Maximilian, but I go by... Maximilian practically all the time online anyway for the last 13 years so it's more or less as good as any name for myself as anything all right so this needs to parent there and there was something else that wasn't attached gee what is that oh <laughs> I call some of the greebles on this uh, restaurant vents because they look like the vents on top of restaurants where they have a lot of cooking going on. So, you know, somebody's, uh, somebody messaged me on Discord asking me if I put on pants. Yes, I did put on pants because pants make me feel, by the way. For any of you uber nerds that are criticizing me saying this doesn't look like katinga yet i know i haven't finished the texturing on the boom section katinga looks pretty different so that part's not done forward pods more or less done kind of i might do a few things to it later this part's not done hull kind of done the cells are not right but you know what not every katinga looks the same anyway all right so so I've got this disruptor thing. Oh, looks like it's actually right where it needs to be. Boom. Oh no, I forgot to attach these running lights too. Darn, okay. Always something, right? This is the problem with 3D modeling. As soon as you think you're done, especially if you're animating too, something else comes up. Let's see, these are totally in the wrong place. Actually, I think on the Katinga, these are, there's two that are placed here and one here, like on the outside. So this is, this might change. Let me just get that right, right now. I think they're just, I can look at my reference images, but I can kind of go from memory. There's a beacon light here. The nav lights and clean on ships are very diff or kind of different from somewhat different from Federation ships. They don't really strictly follow the nav light rules. Uh, by the way, I don't know if any of you have seen the la the latest episode of Strange New Worlds, but they did say a Katinga was coming to or a few Katingas were coming to challenge the Enterprise, when they were dealing with... I'm not going to spoil it too much for anyone who hasn't seen it. But, eh, my nerd gatekeeper brain went, actually, uh, Katingas are the upgraded D7s, which were by the TMP era. 
they're definitely not supposed to be in the Pike era. But, you know, whatever. <laughs> we can't expect the Star Trek writers to be as good nerds as the rest of us. Oh, you know what? This is not... This positioning of these themselves is wrong. I need to fix all this because... Let's see. Did that happen? If I don't fix this now... Fix this. And then I go on to texturing. By the way, if anyone is really trying to get my attention, send me a super chat and I will definitely pay attention to you. <laughs> okay. Yeah, how did this nacelle get out of position? I don't know. I must have done something. Did something weird. Why? Why did I do that? Let's see. I'm kind of eyeballing it. Let me look at a reference picture real quick. One that I'm not live streaming. This this friend of mine is trolling me in Discord. But he won't come on voice comms. I think he's probably watching. Nacho, if you can hear me, just come on voice comms, dude. Hang out. Okay, back to work. Okay, I've got this more or less accurate. That goes there. Make sure this is parented properly. Shoot, it is. Okay, good. All right. So now, I'm actually just going to copy the nacelle over. Get rid of that one. See, I need to delete a hierarchy. One thing that I'm annoyed about Blender is that it's a little bit harder to find everything you're working with compared to other 3D programs. Think speaking lights will be superfluous. All right. I'm going to select hierarchy and duplicate this bad boy. Move it across to the other side. And, uh-oh. Oh, yeah. And then uh, mirror it. Let's see. Object. And now we're back in business. Okay, good. All right. Now, back to our weapons question. The question of the weapons. First thing I need to do... I think we're definitely going to fire some heavy weapons, too. Let me bring in the emitter from my... Uh, let's see. <laughs> For those of you who are wondering why I'm moving at this angle, it's because my camera is blocking my file menu. <laughs> All right. Okay. So, let's, let's see... Let's bring in heavy disruptor emitter. And let's go look at that. And it, whoa, where is it? Hmm, oh. I think it dragged the nacelle it was attached to in as well. What the? Oh. Let's see. What? I appended a disruptor weapon, a disruptor emitter. And I don't know what happened to it. And disruptor turret, blah, blah, blah. Let's try. There it is, right there. Heavy disruptor emitter. Select. Where are you? There you are. Right where it's supposed to be. Okay. Actually, it's going to be up here, since the Katinga doesn't have disruptors on the nacelles like the D7. 
Not that we know of, anyway. So it's going to be up here with... Uh-oh. Let's see. I'm missing the actual turret. I'll put it on this one for now. All right. I'll put it right there. I haven't set up the, uh, the weapons on this just yet. And then we'll have to do some torpedoes as well. And that will be interesting. Hmm. What happened to my disruptor turrets I had right there? I must not... Must not have... Uh... I gotta get organized first before I really start animating. Let me see what the submitter is doing, though. Let's see. It's got nothing. It's got no emitter modifier on it. Wait, oh, I've got the wrong stupid thing. Okay, here it is. Frames start at 140, end at 230, so we should see some disruptor. Oh, yeah, okay. Yeah, okay, it's baked for down there. Delete bake. Bake. We'll rebake it from up here. I'll catch up on chats here in a second. All right, so we have our heavy disruptor there. Which is a particle system. Figure I've already made it in another scene. Why not reuse it, right? But I want to make them red. I want to make them all red. Any thoughts on whether they should be red or green? I know just traditional to make Klingon disruptors green. But I really think... I want them to be red. I'm the artist and I want them red. So I'm going to make them red. And then I'm, I'm sure that there will be some nerds that will come into my comments section and they'll be all like, yo, why you got, why you got red disruptor? No, they'll be like, why do you have red disruptors? The disruptors on Klingon ships should always be green. <laughs> all right, let me get caught up. Let's see. I gotta scroll back a bit. Uh, Bluebird Grumpy Cat. Grumpy Cat says USS Farragut could be the first ship to encounter a Katinga. Yes. I'll probably just change out the texture for the saucer section to have a different name here in a second. Uh, the Enterprise. Yep. The Enterprise did spearhead the refit project, I believe. Jay Sanders says could the Enterprise start a roll? after taking the hit, trying to bring the weapons to bear. Yes, absolutely. You read my mind, Jerry. Uh, Jay. Very good. Donald says, is talking to Thor Hammer about, from what he knows of Star Trek weaponry, it's about the atomic level damage uh, without radiation. Uh-huh. Uh, just all in one resource. Okay, Thor's Hammer. Can Star Trek weaponry be put on gigaton tier levels through, during the Dominion War? Oof. I will touch on that in a moment. Jonathan Riddle says, does the Katinga have a shuttle bay? Yes, it does. The Katinga shuttle bay is very much like the D7, although it has much smaller shuttle doors, which I've already remodeled here. Uh, there, The shuttle bay is right back here. And these are auxiliary power systems of some kind. Um, okay, Bluebird Grumpy Cat says the M5 has taken over constitution construction of the Katinga. Oh. <laughs> Jonathan Riddle says, love the front profile of the D7. Yep, yep. Uh, Donald has always loved the aggressive profile of the Klingon Romulan ships, as do I. And he asks, what does the Starship Enterprise and toilet paper have in common? They both circle Uranus looking for Klingons. Oh, I, you know, that is a Star Trek dad joke if I have ever heard one. Ugh. But I'm, I'll try to remember that, Donald. That's, uh, that's kind of fun. All right. Okay. So, I need to make sure, first off, what happened to my disruptor turret that was there. 
Also, on the Katinga, there are disruptor turrets right here in the corner of this boom section, which to me makes absolutely no sense whatsoever that they would be there, because that means they can only fire at a 45 degree angle between the neck and the hull. And yet, all the literature shows... Enterprise needs to move. All the literature shows that uh, that's where they should be. And I don't know why, but my disruptors I had down here went missing, so I'm just going to be lazy and put these down here. These are some... I don't know if this is exactly what a Klingon disruptor turret looks like, because there's not really a lot of up-close imagery. So I just kind of wing it and made this. And now I've got to get the angle right so that it's... Oh, come on. Let's do... Let's do local rotation tool. So that it fits properly on this disruptor platform, whatever it is. And normally I finish a model, texture it and everything, and set up what you would call the hierarchy. In other words, what's parented to what, before I even think about animations. But I can make several test animations without textures. I might come back and finish the textures on my own outside of the live stream, obviously. But if I get some sample animations done in a reasonable amount of time, I certainly will post them in the community chat of my channel. Maybe some GIFs, some animated GIFs and things like that. All right. Now, if you, if you nerds are going to request me to actually rotate, animate the rotation of this disruptor turret, my brain's going to fall apart because it is not really set up for that. This barrel would have to be a separate object, and the sphere would have to be a separate object. So, unfortunately, when you see how the sausage is made, there are certain, there are certain, what I should say, um, tricks that I have to do for the sake of time. <laughs> okay. Alright, I will worry about the ship movement in a minute. I want to change the color. Okay, what about this other disruptor here? This one is already more or less in the right position. Let's see. The tail of it's kind of coming out a bit past the uh, the actual turret. Not a big deal. So what I think I'll do is just change the position here. And once I get these set up, I'm going to just duplicate them so that it's firing every freaking turret. But before I do that, I'm actually going to... Um, to find this better, I'm just going to parent it to the main hull. Object, there we go. All right, now everything should be attached correctly. All right, now I need to change the weapons colors. First, I need to find where... So basically what a particle system does... In this case, is it finds some objects and it spews them out at a particular rate. And um, the object can be a generic object or it can be another rendered object. In this case, it's something called Disruptor Bolt Light. So that is the object that it's instancing. So I'm going to find that one and change the color. Bolt. Ah. I not spell. Come on. There we go. It's out of view, so that 
when I actually render this thing, it's like, okay, there it is right there. And there's the other one. Cool. So one is blue, one is sort of turquoise because they were Romulan disruptors when I was animating the other one. So let's change this to a different color. We're going to make it red. Hello, rain. We're going to make it red because I want it red. Red, red. Actually clean on disruptors. They're actually green, but creative license. Creative liberty. Oh. I made the mistake of getting my camera out of position. Damn it. Let's see. Okay. Where is this thing? Disruptor. Wanted to look at it. So let's just type in bolt for a disruptor bolt. I'll find it. Okay. Disruptor bolt. Right. Come on. Ah, come on. Oh, let's see. Where are you? There it is. Let's move this over. She. All right. I don't know if y'all can see the... Uh... Oh, yeah. Yeah, y'all can see that. Okay. Y'all can kind of see the glow on it. Ooh. Let's make this sort of orangish. To me, it doesn't seem bright enough. I want it brighter. So we'll make it sort of a sunburnt orange, I think. And let's change it. But I don't want to make it so orange that it looks like a phaser. Bring that up a little. All right. That looks better. Let's make it brighter. Back to my camera, which is completely screwed up. Let's see. Yeah. Ah. I messed up my camera position, but I can fix that. All I have to do is find the Enterprise, focus on it, get back in position. There we go. There we go. All right, now. Now, it's not, the animation is not going to look like that. This Klingon ship is going to be way back here as it decloaks and comes at the Enterprise. Gee, why? All right. Okay. So what I'm going to do... Let's just have a look at this. Oh. I've got to... Rebake the... Particle emission. And if we do that... We get the disruptor fire. It's actually firing at an angle, sort of. Don't know if I'm going to continue that way, but we'll see. And that is only one disruptor turret. Um, I don't know if you guys are able. Able. The cameraman is taking his. Let's see. Is my camera weird? Oh yeah. Yeah, I have no cameraman. And I have, I probably should get a better camera. I don't know if you guys can see this render that I've put up. I'm rendering right now. Um, find out in a minute. No, I don't guess you can. Darn. Let me see if I can enable. If I can throw it up here. Uh, let's see, window capture. No, I better not do that because it might screw screw up my stream. 
So next time I'll set this up because I just did an actual render so that it's in its full glory and y'all are not able to see it. And I screwed up my camera again. Okay. All right. Let's get the movement down and then we'll come back to weapons. Oh, I need to change the other disruptor. Let's see. Bolt. Let's change the other one to red because I want it red. To get more used to live streaming, I'll actually normally when I'm working alone, I'm a little bit faster. Okay, it's gonna be red. Not red and green, that looks silly, but red and orangish, red and pinkish would be fun, but let's make it red and orangish. There we are. Okay. That looks pretty sick. Okay, back to the camera. And, oh yeah, let's see, where's the heavy disruptor bolt coming out here? Oh, there it is. Okay. It's going to be two. I guess to, and this is not baked, so let me f change that. Disruptor. Just for entertainment purposes. Let's see. I will change the heavy emitter so that it uh, looks correct. And then we'll have to do torpedoes. Torpedoes especially photon torpedoes are a real art oh wow they're disappearing quickly let's change the the lifetime on these disruptor bolts to about 150. and they're a little bit slow 20. so i'll change the speed the velocity of these disruptor bolts and bring the animation up again Yeah. Of course, the camera's going to be following everything. Okay, yeah, that's much better. Yeah. Actually resurrected starships. The disruptor bolt should be green. Yeah, 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 I know. All right. So let's get the Katinga movement down. And this is going to be... I don't know. See, getting the. It's real easy to animate something in a straight line like I did with the Enterprise. But getting it to bank and do all that kind of stuff is a little more complicated. Um, so I'm thinking this Katanga will decloak. I might change the timing on these weapons. In fact, I'm sure I will. And its entire movement. It's going to be a strafe. Let's just keep it simple, right? A strafe that will last, let's say, about halfway through the whole animation, right about here. Let's see how many frames. Let's be precise here. 360. So at frame 180. Now, I mean, it needs to continuously move. What am I talking about? All right. It's just going to go from here. And by the end of the movement, it will... be more or less in this position. Uh, maybe not that far. There. I. I think the Katinga may be faster than the Constitution at Impulse. Get a, a very nice power plant. May even be faster than the Constitution at Warp. And there it goes. It's coming. Now the disruptors are off because I haven't baked it in with the new animations yet. 
but I can fix that. Just for your entertainment, I will do that. Thick, thick. Here we go. So, okay, delete bake. So as you can see, all this stuff takes a lot of time. <laughs> this is why I can't put a video out like this, like, very often. And this is, of course, I work a lot faster when I'm not streaming, but still, this takes a lot of time. And I may be adjusting the positions here. I think... Um, and obviously, I'm going to adjust the weapons impacts as well. But honestly, this looks kind of cool. The uh, the disruptors just happen to be lining up more or less, aiming in the right direction. But then I've also got to do some torpedoes. Let's see. Let's see what it looks like from here. Also, I think this Katinga should be higher than the Enterprise. It looks like it's just going to run into it from there. <laughs> All right. Huh. All right. Okay. So the focus should be on the Enterprise. Let's see. Okay. All right, so I've got to move this bad boy up. Uh, let's see. Z. Let's see how far higher. Is it just me, or is the Enterprise look kind of small? Um. Okay, worry about that in a minute. Yeah, I probably will be changing the uh, probably will be changing the Constitution class ship to something other than the Enterprise. All right, so I've got my new keyframes in. Let's see what happens here. This angle. I think I need to do some camera magic to make this really good. Yes, the uh, disruptors are firing from empty space. This is normal. Until I rebake the... Uh, let's do that now. So the question is, how many disruptors am I going to fire? I'll probably fire... Yeah, four. I'll, I'll fire... Um, Two heavy disruptors and two lighter disruptors. Yeah, it might be. When I'll get it close in animation to here. Let's see, let's have a look here. Yeah, it does look a little small. Also, the Katinga is a little bit high. Yeah, that. That Connie is just a bit too small. I really should be more organized with my sizes. Try and actually be accurate to scale, but you know. And I'm pulling stuff from wherever. Okay. That's better. Okay. All right. So we need to get some good camera work in here now. Let's get rid of this. Okay, Mr. Camera. Let's get your animation set up. Hmm. Yes, that's max a million. <laughs> okay. I'm actually just going to do an animation record here and then change my camera angle 
It's about there. Frame 180. And then we'll see how this is going to work out. And even, ooh, this this kind of is a happy accident. But the okay, but the the disruptors need a new bake. They need a new bake because this is not how they're actually going to fire. Let me rebake these particle systems. What's happening here? Ah, uh, those are not the emitters. Emitter. As, um, oh, who is that? Bob Ross would say, if those disruptors do fire directly towards the camera, that would be cool. I don't know if that's what we want, but that would be, like, maybe a happy accident. Sounds like you guys want some other ship other than the Enterprise in here, or at least the ones in this chat. So, tell you what, we'll, we'll make it, perhaps we'll make it the hood. There, I don't know if anybody plays the old FASA uh, tactical starship combat simulator game, tabletop game. Um, oh yeah, we're going to have to make some changes. This is cool. Let me see. But anyway, in that game, uh, there's a... The way you learn the game is from a, a scenario called Big Bad Wolf, and it pits a Katinga against... A constitution class. Alright, so now we're going to have to probably change... What we're going to have to do is make sure that these disruptors can target the Enterprise properly and actually hit. And I'm not sure if I'm 100% happy with... Well, that's a lot of disruptors coming out. Disruptor bolts. That's okay. It's kind of cool. kind of looks like a kind of looks like those, um, well, it kind of looks like a machine gun at night. Let me do, go to cycles mode. So Blender has two render modes. One is the cycles mode that actually uses ray tracing, and the other is just sort of a preview mode. All right, but let's get our camera worked out first. We worry about all the rest. Keep this simple. Always overcomplicating things. All right, we'll go to the. I figure probably around here it's going to fire aft weapons. Let's see. Uh, oops, I probably shouldn't. Let's just do the record mode. Yeah, right about there. It's going to fly on past. So we'll be here. We need a better view of the Katinga, though, from this, once we get to about here. Let me do this. Let's, um... Uh, Let's pan this over a bit. There we go. Okay. I think this is going to work out. Because now here we're focusing on the Katinga. I wish we could get closer though. Let's see. Maybe we can. Yeah, this is kind of... There's probably better methods of uh, animating camera movement. But if I get too many camera keyframes, camera's going to be really jerky. It'll be like Battlestar Galactica reboot style. You know what? That's going to work. Okay, so in the ending animation... And then finally we're going to go, we'll put a keyframe right here. And then 
from this point in time, we'll just zoom right up to the Katinga. Let's see. To record mode. All right. Okay. All right, so we'll start here. This little ship coming along. That ship's still got a decloak. We'll worry about that in a second. I have a great decloaking effect we're going to do later. And I still need to fix the weapon angles. And we zoom up to the Katinga from here. And we will fade out. Actually, this is a little bit herky-jerky. If we just go to here and then fade out, it, it will end abruptly. So what I'm going to do is a faster zoom up to the Katinga. So that we'll have a chance to fade the thing out. And tra oops, transition better to the next scene I put in the video. And to do that, we just go like that. All right, so we're here. That's still a little bit wrong. Let's see. Seems like everything's moving a little too fast, doesn't it? I could stretch this out to 20 seconds. All right. Just make some little tweaks to the position of my camera animation keys. I think that would work. You know what? I probably... It does end a little bit abruptly. It'd be nice if I could get a lingering view of the Katinga as it is flying off in this direction. And actually, it needs to decloak as well. So... I think maybe because this, this, I think, the start of this is pretty good. Uh, angles look good, animations all right. But I think, well, actually, it could decloak from this point and then fade out. You know what? Sometimes I try to overcomplicate things so much. Like it could start decloaking right here. In fact, why don't we just let's bring that back up to here? You know. So Star Starhop is just asking how much damage will it do to the hood? You know that remains to be seen. I'm not sure if we should end the scenario with the D7 or the Katinga actually destroying the hood or leaving it heavily damaged. If the hood survives and they can report back to Starfleet what happened, and that means or report back to the Federation what happened, and that means an act of war. Um, and I also figure that this scene will start in near some sort of spatial anomaly that prevents too much communication. So perhaps this is all part of the Klingon's plan to actually, but then later on, uh, upon further investigation, the Federation, you know, sends a ship out here, tries to find some debris or whatever, and they sort of put two and two together and realize it probably was the Klingons that did it. So they're like, dang, we really need to upgrade our constitutions. But the Klingons are going to deny it, of course. It's like, you dare accuse us? We had nothing to do with it. Perhaps you should not fly your ships near pulsars or whatever we're going to fly it near. I don't know that I have time to set up a whole pulsar back here, but that would be pretty fun. Because I I kind of am hoping, I don't know if I'll be able to, but I'm hoping to do an entire video on this by um, next weekend. I'm really going to have to 
scramble to get it done, but I'm going to try anyway. All right, I'm just going to catch up on chats before I continue. Donald says it looks amazing. Jonathan Riddle says it could be the USS New Jersey. Uh, like the battle that disabled it before they put it in the Fleet Museum. Uh, perhaps so. Perhaps. Uh, Don Don says, let's assume that modern Star Trek, despite being among my guilty pleasures, doesn't have to be or feel like Star Trek at all. Well, it certainly, probably, almost certainly is a different timeline, at least. So there's that. Uh, Donald Hudson says, maybe an upward sweep from below, above to high. Yeah, I kind of want to do that, but I think this will work with the camera angles and stuff. It seems pretty much dynamic enough. And I'm going to put a lot more weapons action on here, too. And then probably at this point, it's, it's going to fire an aft torpedo. I think if I can, I really should... Because I do want there to be an actual fight here. But I, I think it should actually destroy that Connie. I do. In the end. Or at least... Yeah, I think it should. I think it should be a good fight. The Klingons actually destroy the thing. But this could be the initial attack. Surprise attack. Okay. And more chats. Perhaps war, Donald says. Um, Bluebird says he thinks the USS Hood could be the ship the Katinka goes after. Then later, it could be the Farragut trying to investigate the damage. Yeah. Yeah, that's an idea. I could... Uh, we could have this battle, and then I could have some other starship coming and taking a look around, picking through the debris. And maybe sending the data to Starfleet Intelligence. Um, you'd think that there, they would have, if they do find the debris, there should be enough evidence to demonstrate that it was a Klingon ship. But perhaps if these are upgraded disruptors, the signatures of the disruptors would uh, leave a different kind of damage profile on the hull. So, perhaps the weapons will be just enough different, just enough for the Klingons to have some a minimum of plausible deniability with a wink and a grin. But I think the Klingons kind of want the Federation to know that they're capable of doing this. Because that would be a Klingon thing to do. We're going to say this Katinga is working alone. We're going to say the Klingons really, really want to test its uh, this uh, Katinga's ability to fight a constitution. They're reasonably confident. But... It would be very Klingon to say, no, this battle is mine alone. All right. Okay, so I think what we're going to do now is set up the targeting for these disruptors better. And then we will put more disruptors on here. And then we will... Um, maybe if there's time. I'm going to say the stream is going to be another hour. We can start to put a torpedo weapon in there. Uh, all right. So here's what we're gonna do. We're gonna set up. I need a. I need a targeting object. So we're gonna add. We'll, we'll have it attack the saucer. Cursor to selected. I'm gonna add a. My chat is blocking it. Y'all can't see it, but my chat is blocking it. I'm going to add an empty called plain axis. That's not quite where I want it. This is going to be the target for most of the disruptors. 
GC. Put it right about there for now. And then we will find the disruptor emitters and we'll add a position constraint and target them. I need to name this actually before I do that. Let's see. Let's see. First, I need to parent it, parent it to that saucer section. And we are also going to name this thing. Disruptor target. Or actually target disruptors or DIS. Now let's go disrupt door. Okay. Okay. Let's start with the light disruptor emitter and target it to that. We're gonna add object constraint track to. And the target is target disruptor. Oh, and of course its angle is all fracked up. So let's see. Actually, that might be exactly what I need. All right, I need to reset the emission. Reset the emitter. Go back here and see if it's going to fire. Oh, yeah. Yeah, that's not right. Oh, maybe it is right. Oh, but they're firing too slow. <laughs> so, and they're, they're not alive long enough. So every one of those are going to miss. All right, that's fine. Okay. Okay, so we need to maybe, let's see, 20. I don't know if I need this many. Let's bring this down to 15. Velocity. Let's bring it to 70. Lifetime. 200. Too much is better than not enough. All right, let's see how this turns out. It's still... Something is wrong. I need to get up close to that disruptor and see what's going on. It's actually tracking to where it's supposed to go. This is one of those things where something should work, but it doesn't. Try to rebake the sequence. And then you have to do all kinds of twe tweaks to figure out just what is preventing it from doing what you want it to do. Huh. Seems to me, because we can see the track two line right there, the disruptor bolts should be following that, and they are not. So I don't know what. This happens on almost any big animation project I do. Something doesn't go quite right. Maybe it's the way I have this set up. Okay, let me... don't think so. Delete bake. And just what is the malfunction here? Get up close to it. 
basically the particle is supposed to come right out of that face right there. But something is quite off. It looks to me like well, maybe it's just all right. So ah. The firing too far low, I don't understand. Huh. Pretty much supposed to be following this blue line. Hello, Logan. Thank you. You know, the last time I did a, uh, Logan, the last time I did a major Thrawn video breakdown, I didn't get a lot of views. Maybe I should make another one. Now that Ahsoka is coming out and there's a glimpse of, oh yeah, this is all just, <laughs> I don't know what's happening. All right, so. Basis distribution jittered. Knit from try it this way. I should be coming out of the faces. Oh. Hmm. Okay. I'm a little bit stumped. This happens all the time. Let me just let me just reset this completely. Question is, let me do an experiment here. If I actually move this Oh, you know what I should do? Let me reset the rotation. Let's see. Maybe that's, yeah, that's the problem. I've got a rotation animation on here, so it's not, I knew, good, I figured it out. Clear keyframes, okay. Yeah, so the rotation animation was interfering with the track two. Okay, that's the problem. God, okay. Track two. Let me get over here and make sure it looks right. Okay, we're going to track to the disruptor target. All right, now I bet it's going to work. Reset the bake again. Logan says he's cautious about Ahsoka. Luke is supposed to be the last Jedi and the first of the new, so don't know how it'll work in the canon. Uh, be cool to see live-action Thrawn, though. Yes, it will be. And it's going to be Lars, Nic Lars Nicholson as Thrawn. Oh, it's still messed up. I think that... All right. I think maybe... I think maybe I have something off here. No, it's still messed up. What is going on here? All right, let me see. Why is it firing that way? I don't know. It's not actually tracking properly. That's the thing. Because at this point, no, looks like it is tracking properly. No, it's not. It's sort of at an angle. So, you know what? My only conclusion is that this face is just wrong in the first place. And that is why it's not hitting properly. I'll look at your chats for a minute. Thank you, Flower Lord. This Katinga isn't done. It's 
I've got the colors more or less set up, but the nacelles need to be changed, the boom section uh, textures need to be changed, and those textures need to be changed. But other than that, I think it's passable, and this isn't finished yet. Other than that, I think it's passable, like, doesn't quite look, if I, if I render with the right lighting, it, it will look almost as good as live action, though. Um, like from, from here. And I'll definitely be updating the lighting as well. Uh, just catching up on chats. Hello, Ansel. Welcome. All right. Now, back to my problem. So what I think I'm going to do, since this disruptor is not hitting the Enterprise, or the hood, we're going to make it the hood the way it should be, because it's not locking onto the target, I'm pretty much just going to reset this thing. Reset the angle to scale. Rotation. Let's see what happens, because I think that the face is slightly off. Alright, let me just... Now it looks flat. It looks like it's Yeah. Looks like it's set up properly. All right, let me apply. Sometimes if you apply things in Blender, apply uh, transforms, it fixes your problems. Apply rotation. And now you're going to track to target this angle. Oh, wait. I know what the problem is. The problem is the origin of this. The origin of this face, for some reason, is off-centered. See, object, set origin, origin to geometry. Now it's in the center. Okay, maybe that was... Wow, if I didn't know that much about Blender, it would have taken me hours or days to figure that out. Now let's see if this fixed it. Okay, back over here to my camera. Yes, it's working now. That's going to hit the Enterprise. And the bottom one needs to be fixed, but the light disruptor is going to hit pretty much right on target. I'm going to, let's see, let me get out of my camera and just come back. If it's hitting the... This might be an excuse for me getting out of animating a, a, an impact here. <laughs> because if it's hitting the uh, if it's hitting the ship at an angle where you're not going to see it anyway. Oh, wait. Let's see. Of course I could change where it's hitting as well. Let's see. Bake this text, bake this particle system. All right. Oh, wait, it's off again. What the? Um, hmm. not working anymore. Huh. Let me try, try to. I am not sure what's going on there. Influence one. Maybe there's just something I'm not doing right. Big, big, big. It's just I've done this a million times in other scenes. For some reason, it's just not hitting at the right place. Logan's asking me if you made Star Trek video or Pete for or a PC game. Would you do include the uh? Would you include the triangle from 
that's a triangle? What is the triangle? Because I don't know. All right. I don't know why that is messed up. When something is unsolvable, normally what I do... Oops. Is I'll come back to it later and move on to something else. So that's what I'm going to do now. Let's see if this... See if I can get this to track. Guys, now when you get it, makers. Okay, so this delete bake. I'm gonna track this to target. It's probably something really simple I'm not getting right, and that's why it's not uh, not doing what it's supposed to be doing. Well, this one's angle is off also. This one's origin is also off. And it shouldn't matter that much. Let's see. Object. Set. Origin to geometry. All right, we'll see if this one works. Yeah, that one's not working either. Why? just firing straight ahead you know what it must be something wrong with how I've got this emitter set up uh, what happens if I do it from volume nope Well, eventually, I'll figure it out. Oh, the triangle. The region of space between the Federation, the Romulans, and the uh, Klingons. Forming a triangle where all kinds of crazy stuff happens. Yes, I remember the triangle. I don't... There was a whole companion book about the triangle in the FASA RPG stuff and I don't remember ever reading it unfortunately so this has got me stumped world space target let's try local space No, that's not what I want. I want world space. So if anyone's just joining me, I'm trying to troubleshoot. Why in the fracking hell my disruptors are not hitting the Enterprise? And this is red. that means something all right I'll just start over again let me see I'll remove the constraint I'll add another one track to this is track to the enterprise saucer see what that does something's definitely wrong here i'm not sure what okay let's 
still doesn't look quite right. Mm. Oh, I meant from faces. There we go. Try to rebake it. There's probably some setting I've turned on. Orientation axis is in the I don't know. I do not know. Oh well. Okay, well in that case, let me see if I can move on to a cloaking effect and then I will come back to this weapons problem later. Okay, so in order to do that, I think I will, I'm going to go to a uh, another Blender instance that y'all can't see and I'm going to open up um, the Romulan Stormbird something from the Romulan Stormbird video because in that video I had a almost perfect decloak effect and cloaking effect so I'm gonna grab that and uh, we'll proceed from that one and I'm probably gonna go another 20-30 minutes and then call it quits here <sighs> Okay, Mr. Stormbird, decloak. Stormbird flyby, cloaking device. Here we go. All right. All right, bear with me just a bit while I get this other ship in here that actually cloaks and decloaks, and then I'm going to copy the, uh, oh, going to need this too. Shit. I'm going to copy everything over. Oh, yeah. Okay. Let's see. All right. Okay. All right, so I've got my Stormbird in here. I'm going to let the shaders load up. Take a minute. Anyway, yeah, the triangle doesn't exist on any of the uh, the newer Trek maps. I was asking, ever thought of designing a civilian starship for Star Trek? Um... You know the old freighter that showed up in Star Trek Three. Uh, well, that was a civilian design, the little civilian freighter. But they took that and they kit bashed the hell out of it for for other things. All right, now let me just make sure this is working. Yeah. All right. So what I've got here is this effect blue effect that goes across the hull and then followed by you can't see it turning invisible with this shader mode but from here we can go into the cycles preview oh bleh. basically this box let's see I'm gonna, hide, I'm gonna change this here. this box is um, causing the cloaking defect effect we're going to display it, viewport. Oh. Display as wire. Visibility. Ports. Display as. Anyway. You 
can't really see the invisibility here, but yeah, it's going to turn invisible. It's got this cool effect on it. So what I've got to do, there's a whole branch coming off the shader tree. Shading. Oh yeah, that looks nice and complicated. Ooh, this is getting me tired. So basically, I have to figure out where. Let's see, I think this, all of this right here, yet. Yeah. Oh my goodness. Very complicated shader I've got here to manage this effect. And I got spherical. Ooh, this is going to be complicated. And my brain is starting to hurt. But anyway, I think I'm going to kind of wrap up now. But um, basically, I've got a few things to sit down and, and sort out when my brain is fresher. And one of them is to get the disruptors to aim properly. And the other is the decloak shader. So Katinga is going to attack this old Connie, which will change to the hood. And... Um, severely damage it and that will be my opening scene and then I'll go into the Katinga, the nature of it and set up the scenario of what would happen uh, about uh, what would happen if the Katinga actually encounters the old con constitution class in uh, in combat and I believe the Katinga will probably win But anyway, so let's see. Uh, Bluebird says he thinks the cloaking effects and renaming the Enterprise first to Hood and later the Farragut would be good. Yep, we'll do that. Um, and Bluebird's also asking, is there a way of making the cloaking effect sort of wavy, almost like how the ship's cloak could decloak during TNG at some point? Yeah, and I have kind of done that in, in other videos in the past. However... I find that cloaking effect kind of boring, but what it would require me to do is set up like a, a distortion plane. It's a little bit more work. Um, in front of it, it's pretty much like making a heat wave effect in front of the camera. Uh, I'd consider doing it. I don't know. Maybe. But I, I think this effect works pretty nicely. If you go back and watch the, the video I have on the Stormbird, if you get a chance... You'll see it in full effect. Also, next stream, I will figure out how I can make it so that when I render something, it's actually going to come out all right. And someone just joined me in Discord. Who is that? Oh, it's Rain. Hey, Rain. Here, I'll, I'll turn on my uh, system sounds. I'm actually losing brain power, so I'm probably going to wrap up. Oh. Another friend shows up. It's Nacho. Hi, Nacho. I'm animating this attack, and I'm going to do a tactical breakdown on the upgraded Katinga versus the old Enterprise. However, two seemingly insolvable problems came up. One, you see I've got a particle effect that's actually firing these disruptors out. It's not aiming and hitting the Enterprise properly, in spite of all my efforts, and I cannot figure out why. Actually, that's the only real problem I've had. Other than that, this angle and everything is going to work nicely. And the other thing I've got to do is apply the um, decloaking and cloaking effect, and I've got this already set up for this other ship here. It's kind of an EVE Online style cloaking effect. However, um, it's complicated, so I've got to take all these nodes in this shader that set it up properly and apply it over to the Klingon ship. And that's going to require me to sit down with a fresh mind and do it. So I'm actually just wrapping up. What are y'all up to? Just got back from work. 
Nice, nice. Cool. All right. Well, let's see. Let's see if I've got more viewers than last time. I think I probably do. Yeah. Pretty similar. A little more. But I'll start doing this more often. Hopefully I'll get more viewers come in. And uh, I think I'm going to get on off here. And I will post uh, updates on my community channel as I make progress. I'm shooting... I need to shoot for Friday night for doing this whole video, so I have got a lot of work to do. Um, but I'll I'll do something. I'll get it. If not Friday night, then Saturday morning. So anyway, uh, thanks for watching, everybody, and until next time, space friends. Mm -hmm.